So I've been working on adding page map scan I Octal in Linux. So we had some use cases and along the way we found more use cases and we came up a very generic IOctal. So we hope that it would be beneficial for other projects as well. So I'm going to share the story and then we are going to share the use cases and then how you can decide how you can use that in your own project. I'm Usama. I work for Culebra. I have Andre with me. So get right watch and reset right watch are Windows APIs. These APIs are, are used to get and clear right tracking state in Windows. Uh, so they can work on any kind of area. So sometimes they need only specific pages from a whole larger area of memory. And also this API has wide use cases. For example, uh, copy on write mechanisms or security intrusion detection or garbage collections on Windows. So we want this to work on Linux by some translation. Uh, so translation can be done in, in some, some ways, which, which can be considered as user space mechanism. For example, mProtect and segmentation handler. So you just write protect a specific memory and in segmentation handler, you do the bookkeeping that which pages were written to and we resolve the fa faults and which pages were not written to. So, and we can also do this by user fault FD. So you register the memory area with user fault FD. And when there is some fault happens, you get a message over the user fault FD and you can resolve the fault and do the bookkeeping. But there, as you know, there, there are signals traveling from kernel to user space. And so this, this would be, it, it, this is very slow. And also this has some implications. For example, some software layers don't like write protected memory. Uh, so it is, it, it creates problem for some use cases. And also some workloads are very demanding. So this create uh, problems for them as well. For example, games is a good use case for that. So initially we thought let's go with uh, soft dirty, which, which is already present in Linux kernel and a lot of other projects are already using it. So soft dirty flag is a combination of PTE flag and VMA flag and operations which were possible was that read operation is possible. You can read the flags or you can clear the entire process of that flag would be cleared on entire process. So we needed more operations and also kernel's activity was affecting it. For example, one VMA, which is non soft dirty could get merged with a soft dirty VMA and entire area would become soft dirty, which shouldn't have been. And also uh, this, this is historic that why this is, it is what it is like uh, when they were uh, implementing this feature. So they had this idea that th there shouldn't be separate VMA for soft dirty and non soft dirty VMAs. So the shortcomings are that it is not accurate. Atomic get and clear operation is not possible because page map is a file, right? You need to write or read at, at one time. And soft dirty flag or on a part of the memory cannot be cleared. So originally soft dirty, it was created for crew. In crew we have uh, one of the features that we have is uh, live migration. In case of live migration, we we want to do the full memory dump, and on the next iteration, we want to like, dump only the memory that uh, have been changed from the previous iteration. And and this is why we implemented soft dirty. It's a memory tracker, and like it was created 10 years ago. And at that time we didn't have user fault FD. We didn't have any other like ideas how to implement a memory tracker. And we want to implement it as simple as possible. Uh, because you know, it's, it's a sort of hard to push something in the kernel that has only one user for, for this feature. So it should be simple. And, as for downsides that we 
Uh, it's not atomic. Uh, we have problem with some VMAs that can be merged. All this uh, downside, they, they're not so critical for Crew. So we, we use soap dirty for many years and it just worked for us. Um, uh, that, that's it for now. And so we created a prototype IOctal based on soft dirty. And in that prototype, we decided that we will just ignore the VMA part of PT. We may part of the soft dirty flag and we, we should be okay because kernel at that moment was was setting PTE soft dirty flag regardless if it, it, it is it was set on VMA or not. But when we are just coming up prototype, we had sent it upstream, but we found that it got broken because of something else. So they stopped setting PTE flag if VMA flag was set because no user was affected. So we couldn't do anything. Uh, so at that moment, we tried that let's fix this soft dirty sport over VMAs. Let's, it was kind of a idea where we will just keep record of those areas which are soft dirty. But this, this was increasing the size of VMA and that is frowned upon. So uh, finally, uh, community came to help. So Peter, Peter Zhu recommended me user fault FD. Initially, I was skeptical. So this is something else, how we are going to use it. But user fault FD had write protect flag already, but it was, uh, we need needed to resolve the faults from user side. So we came up with that, let's make it asynchronous. So if it, it would be a specific mode where user will, uh, kernel would set, kernel will resolve the fault automatically. Uh, so this, it really helped us. And soft dirty, dirty would be the opposite of the write protected. But then we found another problem that some PTE none or empty pages were not storing the state that this page has been uh, write protected. So we added another feature in user fault FD, write protect unpopulated. So this, this it started using PTE markers to mark those uh, zero pages. So page map IOctal came into life finally, where we were using write protect flag instead of soft dirty flag. And input was giving, being given as PM scan arc. And we kind of tested it a lot in different use cases. A lot of other community suggested things. Uh, so we started returning data as a compact structure in, in form of ranges with specific flags for Windows. Uh, API emulation or translation, we needed max pages so that how many pages we want to find in this area and then we just want it to return. And then we implemented ever all the all of this scanning functionality for all memory types, pages, huge pages, huge TLB and holes. So supported operations are, you can uh, perform get operation if output buffer is specified. You can write protect a specific memory area and you can abort the operation if no if no area is uh, has write protect async enabled because uh, before using this ioctal you will have to use uh, user fault fd's write protect async and unpopulate it as required so the these measures were necessary and we added filtering support uh, on the request of Andre. So initially I said that our IOctal is the generic IOctal, but it was not ge that generic. So he suggested a lot of things like which, which we implemented, for example, filtering spot inside the kernel. So we will get, give kernel a specific requirement that we need these pages, which this, this flag set and this not set and that. So all of this mess just uh, sporting, sporting that. So, and a page map sports a lot of flags, but we have decided to sport only those flags inside this IOctal which are needed, which have some use case. Uh, for example, page is written uh, is the original use case for for us, and the others are for CRIU. So initially, it uh, it. It had good performance overall as if we compare it with the user space solution, but still it had 
a lot of room of improvements like which i initially was saying that no we we don't need to improve it further but but by testing and by help of others like paul guffman so he helped find out that no this could be improved way more so we done multiple passes to make code code more simpler and more performant so when we were write protecting pages we done that on our end instead of using whatever user fault fd was using and we started flushing tlb only once so that was very expensive and we started using less uh, temporary memory inside the octal because data cannot be written to uh, buffer from inside when you have taken a write mm lock and also we reduced the page walks so benchmarks were astronom astronomical as you can think like uh, we are comparing user space solution with a kernel space solution but overall the real win here is that we are doing things we have a, a, we, we can do all those things which were people doing by reading page map file they can do by ioctl way faster and a few words about the new interface in crew uh, the main interest of this new interface it's uh, how to effectively handle pages that we need to dump because uh, before this new interface, we used uh, page map, but page map, uh, in case of page map, if we want to know some information about uh, pages, what we need to dump, we need to read information about all pages in a memory mapping. With a new interface, we can do some filtering inside the kernel. We can request, okay, give me just uh, pages that are, uh, present or swapped it's actually the pages that we need to dump we don't need to know uh, what file pages we have uh, we don't need to know what pages uh, like zero pages and so on um, so uh, it's the new interface is much more efficient in terms of queue because we don't need to read a lot of information from the page map file and now we can just uh, request uh, send requests to get all pages that we need to dump and we get not like information about separate pages we get regions that uh, the memory that should be dumped um, another good thing about the new interface that we can detect zero pages we need to know information about zero pages when we we are doing pre-dumps uh, it's uh, for example if if we dump some pages on the first iteration on the second iteration if we detect zero pages instead of pages that we already dumped we need to like remove these pages from the parent images to save some space on the disk and uh, this stuff uh, the problem with zero pages is that uh, with the page map we use uh, a physical address to detect zero pages because all zero pages will have the same physical address in the kernel so to detect zero pages, we we create a new mapping, uh, read physical address for like zero pages that we know that it is zero, and then we use this physical address to detect zero pages in uh, other mappings that we're going to handle. Um, and as for the new memory tag we're going to support it in the crew because i don't remember i think we we have some problem with unprivileged mode in crew and soft dirty and uh, we can use a new tracker in the unprivileged mode because we the only thing that we need to to be able to create is user fault fd and i think by default user fault fd we have a syscatl that control whether unprivileged process can create user fault fd or not but if it's enabled we we can use this memory tracker in unprivileged mode yeah so andre benchmark page map scan i worked on his end and he also found quite some good benchmarks and a lot of speed ups between different 
iterations of the dumping. Yeah, so so now we we should think that what can could be the more use cases. For example, if there is something which is using page map file already, so you can use. This work with mAdvice page up. That would be nice if you could just do a scan and say mAdvice page up, where the the PT is present. You know. It's a simple filter like that, rather than having to use the process and advice. So a process and advice, it, it takes a pet FD and then it takes like a, some virtual ranges, which is unfortunate because then it's a two-step process. You're looking at proc S maps and deciding what you want to do. But if you could do if you could do it through page map on it's just keeping a proc FS interface. So rather than having to use a syscall interface to proc S process and advice. It's doing it in one step rather than two. So it's basically saying rather than going and parsing proc S maps and then hoping mappings haven't changed when you turn around to try and use process M advice, you do it in one step where you say you're already walking all the VMAs. When you find the things that match this filter, page it out. I don't know. Just a thought. Yeah, maybe we're introducing you, but just a doubt. Yeah, I've never been happy with the the process of advice. I'm advised to take out of it. So far, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Hmm? Oh, thanks. Uh, any particular reason? why you can't use the hardware of it, which means you don't have to write protective pages, you don't have to take page faults. Uh, and some modern CPU, I believe, have some particularly effective way of batch collection of hardware.tbits, at least for virtualization, maybe not for, uh, for user pages. But I mean, that's something KVM has been doing for a long time for migration, for example, or for even tracking the VGFM buffer. Uh, why can't you use a hardware.tbit? Flush the existing one into the struct page to clear it and then use the actual hardware.tbit. Is there a particular reason why you can't do it? So can you repeat the question? Sorry. Is there a particular reason why you can't use the hardware dirty bits, the real hardware, huh, okay. instead of right protecting the pages? And so you don't have to take page faults. So both are very different. So the idea here is that uh, the hardware dirty bit is uh, is uh, managed by hardware, right? So here, set by hardware, it's cleared by software. Uh, but here we are looking at different from different different perspective. That, for example, any piece of software just want to know that which. So there is an area of, let's say, 10 pages. It wants to dump only those pages which are changed. So you can use a simple, this API, this is so that which pages are dirty, you can just dump those instead of hardware dirty bits. I, I don't understand. I mean, you currently are trying to emulate the hardware dirty bit by taking page faults. Why can't you just use the hardware tells you specifically those pages have been changed? So, and you don't have to take page faults for it. So, yeah, but that's okay. You, 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 you can transfer the current dirty bit into the struct page and you get a clear dirty bit and then you can, you can use it from there. I mean, you probably still need some changes to the VM, of course, to collaborate, but it seems to me like using the hardware the way it's meant to be and would avoid the cost of the page fault. Yeah, I don't want to know about this solution was suggested by the The fact is that your API exposes the fact that under the hood you are doing the right protect the page fault so is what bothers me. It means that we can't then in the future, for example, improve it by using the harder database dirty bit instead and completely remove the page folds and write protection. The API, I think, exposed too much of the underlying implementation. Uh, 
instead of having a higher level of API, which is tell me what's changed. Um, and so in the future, if with some collaboration with the VM, we can actually make better use of the hardware bit and make something even more efficient and faster, we're going to have to change the API again. This is my concern, but... Uh, so we're just... Well, you do call it WP Viperlex. So, okay, you expose it at least in the name of the of the flags you're passing, but yeah. Uh, so just like uh, VMS struct, you cannot an add anything to page struct page very easily. Like it but will... it's already there, the dirty bit. You just flush it. Out. Like what the VM does when it harvests the dirty bit today is it takes them from the PT and copy them in the struct page. And that means you can start if you had already a dirty bit in there before you started the tracking, you can do that to clear it out. And from there on, you can actually rely on the, on the dirty bit. Anyway, it's... I'm not sure about... Okay, so many thanks to the community. Andre, Andrew, Michelle, Paul Goofman, and Peter Zhu at helping at different point in times. Thank you. We've got about two or three minutes if there are any more questions or discussions at this point. Yep. So um, I think the software kit bit in Creo is, is hardware dependent, right? It doesn't work on ARM as far as I know. Is this, software, is this hardware independent? Uh, it is hardware independent, but I'm not sure if it is implemented for ARM. So if this user code that we feature and the rest of it be supported for ARM, okay, yeah. So it depends on the user code. Yeah, because the, the pre-dumping doesn't work on ARM right now for you, I think. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.